Hello everyone, Jim and Janelle Moranto coming to you from our studio in Phoenix, Arizona, where we've been operating for 33 years inside these walls. So there's a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge here that we hope to share with you. Today our topic is basic elements of ballroom dancing. And as Janelle will tell you, most of these things that we're talking about today are things I may have learned literally on the first lesson or at least within the first 10 lessons that we continue to work on for our entire career and even to this day we work on them. So the basic things are super important and you learn learning them early is a good thing to do. So we'd like to thank Wayne Ang and Dance Vision for having us and to bringing this to you. It's a special for us because we've been with Dance Vision since VHS tapes, which some of you may not know about up to now live streaming. So it's, a, it's, a, it's 1993, I think it was, yeah, when we first it was started. Yeah. So we have a lot of uh, experience under our belt in teaching online and on video, and we're gonna do it in a very simple way because we wanna address the new dancer as well as people sort of reviewing to make themselves better. And as Janelle said, these things that we learn in our early stages stay with us. Sometimes we have to overcome them if they're done incorrectly. And, and sometimes we just keep working on them because that is mastery. So we're gonna start very simply. I'll have Janelle take a little break and I'll do my thing. So first thing we do, I know you don't have, to have a lot of space in your house and we, we have our studio space, but we're gonna stay in a limited area so everyone can participate. Basic elements of ballroom dancing. There's certain ways we learn. We, we first have to do things alone so we can master our own body. So we learn how to stand alone and how to move alone. That is specific for what we do in ballroom dancing. Then we learn how to put them together. Two people facing each other. It's not a comfortable situation at first. And we learn the rules that make it possible. So physical skills, things we do alone, things we do together, and then how the dancing works as a couple. Super important stuff. So number one, and you know, everybody will talk about this as posture, but we're gonna make it super simple because there's really only two bits in your body that we lose control of. The wiggly bit at the neck and the wiggly bit at the middle. So if we can control those two areas, we're gonna have reasonably good posture for dancing. A simple way to just achieve good posture in your neckline is put your thumb on your collarbones, put your index finger right in that space where your jaw and your ear meet, and lengthen them. That'll keep your head back. It'll keep your nose basically parallel to the floor. And why this is important, because as an advanced mover of dancing, we use this area of the body, which we call the neck and collarbone complex, to create a lot of the motion across the floor. And if the head is down or the head is too far back or it's tip funny, we block the use of our own body or we get in our own way. So number one, Neckline has to be long and a nice vertical neck. Second area of our body, between the ribs and the hips. So thumbs on the bottom of the rib cage, middle fingers down towards the waistline. You can feel the length here. If I pull back and protrude forward, obviously that's not what we're looking for. If I shrink down, that's not good either. So just keeping a nice length there. And the reason we do that is because we want our body to bow and change between our head and our feet. And if this is elongated beautifully, we can change it nicely and create beautiful shapes. So if we're moving in a very basic way, we don't do so much, but as we develop, which you all will, we can do so much more. So that's simple posture. Neckline long, waistline long, all of our parts, getting out of our own way, making it possible to move forward and to shape. So once that's good, we're, we're, we're underway. Now, where does that posture reside? Well, as an athletic pursuit, which dancing is, we're using our body in a very athletic fashion, we always wanna be poised towards the balls of the feet. Heels lightly touching the floor, weight slightly forward. Knees are always softened slightly forward. Now, my trousers are, wide legs so you can't see the softening of the knees, but we're not going down. Down is what we're not doing. The knees are moving softly forward and back to allow the heels to gently be away from the floor. Almost like a diver on a diving board, 
getting ready to go, a little up and down, and you can feel the heels lightly touching the floor. Super important for that poise. So that's just individual posture. That has nothing to do with how we stand with our partner exactly, which I will get into when I bring Janelle. How we move. So even though dancing is based on walking actions, normal walking actions, we have to do it in a much more controlled fashion. So we got to get used to a few things. Number one, as soon as someone stands in front of you, the first thing you're going to want to do is go around them. And everyone who began, I don't care what level you are, we all started the same. Someone gets in front of us and we want to do this. Not good. So we have to train our body to feel what we call leg tracking. Super simple. It helps with your balance, but we're going to talk to the brain and how to do this. So I have a ballet bar there, which I could use to support myself or a countertop. But what you want to do is get a quick understanding of your balance. Bottom of the rib cage, over the knees and over the balls of the foot. That's a good vertical balance. Neckline held long. And all we're going to do is soften the knees, feel a little bit of dropping of the weight. Now the leg, which is now bent, needs to fit between the hip and the floor. So it has to change to move. So I'm going to do it from the side. So all you're going to do is put your toe back, either foot, it doesn't matter. Well, I'm doing the left in this case, hold my balance, and I'm going to move my foot underneath my body so it fits and then extends to become a heel. It fits under the body again, bending all the joints, and it goes back to become a toe. So the foot moves along the floor under the hip whilst I'm balanced over the standing foot position. So if I do that straight on to you, I balance myself, rib, knee, and ball of foot. Foot goes back, leg tracks directly under my rib and hip line, not moving out like this, or maybe sometimes twisting. So very, very straight. So legs always should pass underneath us. And I know it's gonna be diff difficult when your girls are standing in front of you, for ladies, if the guy's in front, that so, so someone might be in the way, but your leg is gonna track nicely, okay? So whether you're going to the forward, back, or to the side. The next thing we do in ballroom dancing is we have to move this bit of our body across the floor. So we soften the knee, do the leg tracking, right? When the foot gets to a point where the, the toes have come away from the floor, we move from where we are here through a slight, slight lean of our body in a direction and we re relocate. So we basically have to go off balance to move because if we stay on balance, we just stay here. And that's where this upper body area became important, which we'll talk about maybe in a later video as we get more sophisticated. So the practice for you all is to start with the foot back, pull the foot under the body to where it becomes a heel. So flattens underneath and becomes toe, ball, heel, and then extend it two inches to move onto it comfortably all the while feeling that the poise of the body somehow assists in the desire to move forward, or what we would call a slight lean in the direction you want to move. So legs are swinging under a body that is directing the leg to move, and you can practice this. Going backwards, it's no different. Standing on one foot, the heel is in front of me, I pull the leg under my body, it's changing angle and position, becomes a toe, and once the and now without reaching my leg too far back, I start to indicate to my own body, go off balance backwards, and then I'll relocate. All the while rolling through this heel and then flexing the knee to change it underneath me again and starting the process all over. So that's a little practice. You can do it in your hallway at home. Just getting your legs used to fitting under that reduced space. So we've got posture, neckline, waistline. We've got leg tracking and swinging. And the last thing we need to do is feel a little elevation on the balls of the balls of the feet. And that's what we did with our posture. So when we move to the side in dancing, we obviously don't walk with a heel. We go with a toe. So I'm going to move to the side. We go with a toe. So the foot can go to the side and we can put a toe on the floor and go from toe to toe. And that is a thing that our body just gets used to doing. So we just slide the foot to the side and it becomes a toe. Stand, slide the foot to the side and it becomes a toe. So you get used to what we call 
pointing alignments. Now that doesn't need to mean anything right now, but as we go forward, we will do that. So we have heel leads when we walk, we leave the heel on the floor and release the toes when we go backwards, and we use the balls of the feet to move to the side. And these are for what we call the swinging dances. Your waltz, your foxtrot, your quick step, and your Viennese waltz. Tango, slightly different matter. We'll cover that in another video. So that's individual movement. That's good for the guy, good for the girl, good for both. Now the hard part. This is where you gotta use your brain. Now we have to put these two bodies together and we have to use lead and follow principles. Lead and follow principles. It's what governs everything we do from the beginning level to the advanced. The ladies and gentlemen's poise are designed with that in mind. And now I'm gonna bring Janelle on board because in my early years of dancing, they focused a lot on the gut. But as we got better, it was, became clear that the lady's poise was really paramount because she had to be in a position to receive lead properly. So Janelle, who is an expert in this area, will give you a, a simple way to do it, or maybe like, let's call it scientific. And then we'll give you the old fashioned way from the 1940s, how is it was explained to one of my teachers and it's kind of humorous as well, so Janelle. Okay, so I like to set my body up to receive the lead, which the lead is felt through the, the, the man's center, let's say, and also his right arm. So when I stand in front of him, I don't want to be in the way. So I like to stretch up through my right side and keep my head over my left leg. So I'm, I'm trying to stay balanced as well. So when I, when I stand sideways, you can see, I try to keep my legs slightly in front of me because when someone moves at me, if my legs are too straight, I feel like I'm gonna fall over. So I'm keeping my legs forward. My head is over my left foot. So I'm gonna give you, and I'm stretched through the right side. I'm gonna give you a formula to put that all together. So if I were to use three imaginary lines, I would say the first one is, if I started from two feet, and I take my head weight, place it over my left foot. I have an imaginary straight line from the top of my head right to my left foot. I also have a second line, which is a diagonal line from the left top corner of my head to my right toe. The third line is my arm should be parallel to the floor, so I have to lift up on the left side. When I do that, it actually causes a little bit of turn. So my hands, my arms are parallel, my head's over my left foot, and my right side is getting long. I want to bring my legs under me so that I can track my legs like Jim was saying. And I have a nice stretch. My arms are in front of me, my legs are in front of me, and I'm ready to receive the lead. And I'm going to be able to stay in the man's arm because I'm keeping my head over here. So I never really want to let my head get over to the right side. Always keeping it over the left leg when I take position. And I'm ready for Jim to come back and explain his side of the story. So here's a great opportunity for our first prop of the day. Now this is silly, but it's effective. This stick represents the lady's top line, that top line. The two ribbons represent the length of her body and from the collarbone basically down to the leg, the two, let's call it halves of the body. The little Dixie cups on the bottom represent the feet. Now, this would be a very short partner <laughs> with maybe a child or something, but, but the lady's poise, it's important that she has tone here because when I place my hands on her, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, I'm going to indicate where I'd like her feet to relocate to by moving the top line. So her feet are gonna be slightly delayed, so she'll always know where to step. I say, oh, feet, go in this direction. Oh, no, maybe over here. And now maybe let's go to the side. So her feet, which are on the floor, there's a natural resistance to motion there, and the lady must be reluctant to move those feet till the shoulders have given her a direction. So this ribbon and a stick indicates that I don't wanna push her here, that I wanna guide her gently from the top. 
So that's my first little prop, which I like to use for people. I'll set it down over here and we'll talk briefly about the guy or the leader, which is a common thing to say nowadays. So Janelle makes her shape. And this is how I like to get people to do this. Even if you're a social dancer, you still have to have this principle in mind. So I take her hand, she's got tone here. I make, let's put it this way, I make an upward connection to where her upper arm meets her body. Some people say it's an armpit, but I'm going up to, to make that connection. This allows my hands to be firm and forward and very directing. So she makes her shape, I touch her here, I make the upward connection, and then I get in as close as I need to be able to dance and go past her. So the lead, if you will, is coming from my entire position, but this is super, super important. Okay. And I always feel that I'm looking over his shoulder. I don't want to get in his way, unless it takes me right out of his arm. So I'm staying offset and parallel with my legs forward towards him, and I'm looking over his shoulder. With my legs forward, I'm balanced when he moves. If they're too straight, I'm off balance. So the old expression is it's a very kneesy thing to do. A lot of knees and a little bit of space. So the legs are always towards one another, but most importantly, the connection of my hands to her upper body gives me an indication to, to be able to tell her upper body where I'd like her feet to relocate to. So if I just start pushing her with my body, I may not know her that well, and I won't get another dance, but if I handle her gently, she will be back for more, and that's the goal. Oh, one more thing. Janelle said this most beautifully about the poise to the left, which is fantastic. And we are both poised to the left, the lady in a recipient of lead slightly more. But I'll just tell you a funny little story about how effective, simple words can be. So this probably was taught to one of my teachers in the 1940s, but one of the elder ladies of dance was uh, very revered and of very few words. So she would say to the ladies, stand on your left leg you're, like you're waiting at the bus stop. Put, put your hand on your waistline, cut in like a fashion model, and carry a pastry tray in your right hand, and you've got the perfect poise. Now, I don't know if that's gonna work for all of you, but I'm gonna say it again. Stand on your left foot like you're waiting for the bus stop, hand on the waistline, cutting in like you're a fashion model, shoulder forward, and carry a pastry tray. Now, I don't happen to have a pastry tray, but I have a tray of some kind, which we'll show. And you know, if you bring the bag as well, right, so the, bag. the bag, the bag, my no, bag. Oh, I'm sorry, bag. Okay, here I am holding the pastry tray behind me, cutting <laughs> in at the waist. This gives me perfect poise, ready to take the lead. So we often wonder, why are we poised to the left? I feel so much ba better balanced here. Well, no offense, ladies, but if I have something heavy in my right side or in my right hand, like my duffel bag, and I'm walking through the airport, you know, briskly moving, trying to catch my flight, which I'm generally late for, I have weight on this side of my body. So in order to balance myself, I naturally lean against it. So I lean opposite. Now, as I do so, I also don't lean directly to the side because I'd be walking funny. I always have slight turn, which we, if you get something heavy, put it in your right hand, like my duffel here. As we dance, we increase speeds. Now, watch yourself, you know, this is gonna go flying. I may increase my angle more to get that going. And if I wanna walk, and I, if I held this at normal and I walked, it would pull me to the right. So in order to balance or counterbalance, if you will, the weight of my partner, I have to poise equal and opposite to the force being created on my right side. So carry your duffel bag. This was one of my first lessons about how to get poised. And you'll feel a stretch of the right side of your neck against that force on the bag. So ladies, carry a pastry tray. Gentlemen, put a right uh, heavy bag in your right arm. And I think, 
we will have the absolutely perfect way of dancing with lead and follow. Okay, so that's, that's a fun little trick. I'll get rid of the gimmicks for the moment, and we will begin with the waltz, okay? So we're gonna start doing the waltz. So we're gonna start with the box with no turning first and demonstrating footwork. So I'll do it backwards like the ladies part and Jim can do Okay, it. and this won't take up a lot of room, but every time we walk forward in ballroom dancing, we walk with the heel. Every time we walk backwards, we, of course, lead with the toe. And I shouldn't have to say that, but one time I was teaching a group class and I said casually, on step one or count one, we're gonna walk with the heel. I didn't think that somebody, and if you watch my feet here, would try to take a heel backwards. But they did, so I learned my lesson. They were very studious. They were very studious, very studious. So when walking forward on the count one from a soft knee, we always walk with the heel. Another rule for, for dancers who might be a little bit more advanced, if you're on a heel, you're stepping with a heel forward. If you're on a toe, you're gonna to step with the toe. That's a, a good simple rule. It may not be foolproof, but it, it will serve you well. So we're gonna do the box step in the waltz. That's a forward walk or a backward walk, followed by a side step and a close. And here's the principles we'd like to address. We walk with the heel, we move side on the toe, and we gently pull the toes together, and then lower. I walk back with the toe, Janelle walks with the heel. We extend the toe to the side, we move to it, and close the feet. Here is one of Janelle's favorite topics about foot pressure and footwork, which I think has served her well over the years. Go ahead, Janelle. Um, I, uh, the pulling of the feet to close. So, as instead of just coming and putting my feet together, I want to take my time pulling my feet together. So say I've stepped forward on the heel, one, and on the two. When I arrive on the two, I'm on a toe, but my knee is bent. And so as this knee begins to straighten, I use the inside edge of my other toe and pull up until both legs are the same length, and then I can lower down through my heels again. So I'm going back, one, I go to the two on a toe, knees are flexed slightly, and as I pull up, I pull my feet together, and my feet are now together and underneath my body each time. So we've got one, pull the feet, and pull the feet. Okay, so we'll do that together. That's a very good description. So it indicates that the body pulls the feet across the floor, and this is where we begin to get some sway in the equation, or the changing of angles of the sides of the body. So let's do that once, Janelle, going back, me going forward, and we do, we do, you don't need your arms up in position yet, because remember, we're all in a small space, even though we are not. We're softening the knees to start, a slight in lean of the body in the direction I want my walk to go. I walk with the heel, side with the toe, close the feet, and lower coming down. Back with the toe, she goes forward with the heel, side and close and lower. And that's, let's do it from the side as well. So you can see that I'm walking with the heel, she goes with the toe, walk, side, close, walk, side, close, pulling the feet together and getting some nice pressure against the floor so that you don't move too fast. Timing, of course, an important issue, and we'll, we'll put the music on in just a moment to be able to do that. So that's solo, that's solo. Now we can also do that, and we should want to do that together. Again, Janelle makes her lovely shape. I connect here, I make an upward connection, and we are offset from each other, leftwardly poised, with a, uh, in our, our head weights in the own set, a separate space. Now, if I'm doing this on a social level, I could, I could keep the hands in here, but I'm still directing from the top of my body to tell her where to go. But we'll assume most of you are, are uh, uh, using this for your more competitive style dancing, even though it's the bronze level, we're gonna have a nice stately poise, uplifted heads, and brightness in what we do. So we walk forward to the side and close, back to the side and close. That's our waltz box. And we will do it from a different angle. Forward to the side and close, back to the side and close. Now when we dance with no turn, 
That is the most basic of what we do. And we can do that with a quarter turn, and this is where things get a little bit more sophisticated. Let me give you the count on this one more time. That's the count in waltzes dance, three even beats. We do one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we can turn this, and this is where we get into the nuts and bolts of good dancing. Good dancing. So ideally to move a lot, one person is going to pass the other one. And this is where we get into the principle of inside and outside of turn, and the pointing little drill you did will start to really become important. So I know this is a basic elements tape, but I think it's important to say here. Um, we have a little rule, two steps forward, one step back, and that means nothing to most people, but I'm gonna tell you what it means to us. When moving forward, you go forward, forward, turning at the end of that second step before you close your feet and change position. When going back, we turn early to allow our partner to pass, and we point to where we're going next, and then we close. So that's really happening over one step. Two steps forward, one step back. So Janelle is great at de demonstrating this, so she will show you uh, the, well, she's gonna dance as a lady, so I'm, you'll go backwards I'll, first. I'll go backwards first. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna go sideways. I, ha I always like, I think this is one of my favorite things to teach to new people because it's all the basic principles are involved, or a, a, a lot of them are. I like to have three simple thoughts as I work on quarter turning box. So that means I'm gonna turn one quarter of a turn each measure. So if I'm facing this direction, when I go backwards, I go back, I point my toe to the wall, I've turned a quarter, I go forward, I'm swinging through and, and facing a different wall, I'm coming back and I've done another wall, and in the end, four times, four quarters, I've made the full turn. But I like, to, I like to start from the forward piece first because I like to talk about how, one, we swing forward twice. There's always two straight steps. I swing forward with my left, I swing forward with the right, and then my feet turn. When I turn, only the feet turn. So the feet turn and not the shoulders. So it's not one, two, three, turning me off balance. So the first thought I have as I go around is that I'm gonna swing straight twice, whether I'm going forward or back. So as I go forward, I go forward one, two, close on three. As I go back, I'm going back one, and I'm swinging straight back on a line, not to the side, straight back on a line, and it becomes a side step as I close. So I'm going forward twice, this step becomes a side step, I go back one, this point, it becomes a side step. And so that was my first thought. Swing straight twice. Never just turning, because that becomes awkward. The other point is that the feet turn only. So I'm swinging through, my feet turn, but not my upper body, so that I continue to have the poise with my head over my left foot. And I'm going back. I've pointed my toes, so I'm going forward, my foot swivels to make the turn. When I go back, I point the toe to make the turn. So that's the second thought. And the third thought is I always want my head over my left foot. So as I take a step forward, one, my head is right over that left foot. I leave it over the left foot as I take the second step and close so that my head is still here. When I go back, I have a little bit of turn on the first step because I'm on the inside of that turn, so I'm there, but I have to take my head with me and with my left foot. So I come forward, I swing away from my head, I go back, I take my head. I'm going one, two, three, one, two, three, always pulling my feet close each time. That was a fantastic explanation. Now a little demonstration of the quarter turn. So I will be doing the forward part when it's my turn. I'll go forward, forward, swivel and close. Janelle goes back point, body. We use the expression body turns less. That means her body hasn't turned more than her feet. And when she lands on her foot, 
she realigns to the new position. That's how we stay facing one another. So we'll do that together. And it's important that our heads stay in this space. My face over her right shoulder, her face over mine, basically dancing cheek to cheek, not nose to nose. So we're gonna do that together so we don't go off the camera. I go forward, forward, swivel and close my feet. She goes forward, forward, swivels and close her feet. I do it again and then she does it. So the forward mover naturally overtakes the distance of the backward mover, but a courteous partner as a backward mover allows that to take place. So we know that this occurs. We allow it to take place by turning early in a lot and allowing our partner to go by rather than trying to fight them and challenge them to move by you. So I just like to say one little thing. Why do we do that? Because we're nice. <laughs> no. what? Here's, now I'm going to be the forward dancer. Jim's going to be courteous going back turning and I'm going to be the forward dancer, but I'm not going to swing straight twice, which will annoy him, but I'm going to go forward and side the way I was taught or the way the book said. So I went to the side. Look what happened. I end up not in front of my car. Oopsie, anymore. the geometry doesn't work. <laughs> so the reason I swing straight, I go straight. Of course, I overdid it, knocked him over. But anyway, I'm going straight, so I end up in front of him. And that's why we do that. Very good. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay. It is an exercise in geometry. So geometry and physics, make sure you study at home. All right, so uh, that was the, but I had one little point to make, okay. silly little point, because years ago when we first learned to do this, it was hard to stay in the arm. So we devised a little way of thinking, and it was simply this. Janelle, do you like to say it? Or shall I say it? When, say it. when moving to our personal right, it's hand and hip. When moving to our personal left, it's head and elbow. So I'm doing it as a lady's voice, but for, for because it's easier to understand from the lady's voice, but when I'm moving to my personal right, it's hip and elbow, and head and hand. And one of our first trips years and years ago to England, we came into the studio for the first time and we're watching a couple dance, young couple, obviously very good. And they had an umbrella over their shoulders. Now, living in Arizona, we don't use the umbrella very often for rain, occasionally for sun as a parasol. But I thought, well, why are they doing that? Well, it helped them stay to the left. So the, we're not gonna use an umbrella, we're gonna use a baseball bat, a Nerf bat, because it's nice and light. And they put that across the right shoulders, right shoulder to right shoulder. And they were whipping around the floor, which we're not gonna do right now, able to keep that umbrella right there. And it gave, them, uh, gave us at least a good imagery of how they stayed poised to the left. So we've used the bat over the years early on, maybe not so much now, but it is helpful. Nice, soft Nerf bat, or if you live in a rainy part of the world, an umbrella will suffice. So that's the uh, waltz box quarter turn. Now we wanted to, apply oh, Janelle's got another, another trick up her sleeve. Okay, I like this, this is a bean bag. And what I like about it is when I'm balancing over my left foot, I like to have my right side completely balanced if it's still hanging out over here, I'm always falling, somewhat leaning to the right. So I take this part right around my collar cone, collarbone next to my neck and balance it over my left foot. And this feels great to me. It's like I just place this bean bag. The weight of that helps me feel where I am. And I like to practice sometimes keeping that bean bag there as I move. So I'm moving. Whoops. Uh -oh. oh, sorry, slippery tops. Okay, <laughs> it's very slippery. Anyway, so that wasn't such a great idea. Let's try that again. I've been trying really carefully today. Okay, you be keep careful. Keep this right on my neck and keep it right here. Okay, so it's good practice. Get one that's not slippery and that would be better. You could also use a Beanie Baby. Those okay. work pretty well too. And they're cute, cuter than a bag. <laughs> okay. All right. So. 
So that's the quarter turning box at a basic level, but hidden inside that basic is a lot of very advanced principles. Inside and outside of turn, poise, the heel leads, the pointing of the toes, review the video and you'll see the secrets magically appear. So another pattern that I think we like to use in the waltz, and we'll be moving into Foxtrot very shortly, would be the uh, twinkle to promenade. Twinkle to promenade, and everybody uses it. Oh no, sorry, before we do twinkle to promenade, let's do the underarm turn. I think that's more appropriate for the beginning level. So we're going to do the underarm turn. Now everybody remembers the footwork of waltz. Everybody say it with me. Heel, toe, 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 heel. Heel, toe, 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 heel. You will say that 25 million times over your career if you dance long enough. Heel, toe, 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 heel. So that's the footwork we're gonna be, if you're going forward. If you're going backwards, toe, heel, heel. toe, 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 heel. All right. All right, so we heel, toe, 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 heel is a really good thing to say. We'll call out my footwork for the underarm turn because I'm going to be doing a lot of walking around. You're going to be doing a lot of walking around. So <laughs> this is the important part. Two important parts. Footwork on the underarm turn. Leg tracking. Legs moving straight. Not turning too early. You're moving forward to swivel. We're not going to turn. And then three, the timing of it so that we can stay together. And I think you had one more thing about the, the right arm, about the spacing of the right arm. Am I thinking of something else? I don't know. No, well, we'll get to it. So we have the box, quarter turning box. One, two, three. I release. That says to her, hmm, something different is going on. And I clear space with no turn. One, two, three. She walks in a big curving arc, dancing the footwork, heel, toe, 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 heel. And then as she does, forward heel toe on her right foot to finish it, I will meet her halfway doing the quarter turning box. Heel toe, toe, toe heel. So let's do that from that angle again. Quarter turning box. I release the hold and do the back half of a box, no turn. And then I do join her and then we can resume the box. The underarm turn. Now, a lot of years of teaching this to people, 38 years of teaching this to people. It's a lot of years. We, the major mistakes is the lady likes to turn too soon. So we're going to nip that right in the bud. And when Janelle comes forward with her left leg, I'm going to move back and she comes straight at me. Now she can begin to turn as I move side and go forward. And then we can walk forward together and it becomes nice and tidy. And she makes a big arcing circle tracking her legs the whole time. Quite beautiful. And I mainly just get my arm so that I don't hit him. When Once he's released and I'm coming forward, I drop it straight down and then I lift it as soon as I pass him and then it's all ready to be placed back on his arm. That's an excellent point because what do you do with that arm hanging out there? <laughs> if you've been hit Enough times, guys, you start to recognize, you better say something to that girl where the arm goes. Right. So dropping it down is an excellent choice. Lifting it up is never a good choice. My head's in that region. So we'll do that together one more time. The underarm turn, we do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and resume the box. That's the underarm turn. Super important now. We're going to do the twinkle to promenade. Yikes. Mm -hmm. Promenade, yeah. very difficult. But it involves foot swivel, like a basic turn that we make, and stepping across our own body, which is leg tracking. So Janelle, do you want to describe something there from the lady's point so, of view? Okay, I'll do, I'll do it backwards. Okay. So on the lady's part, I'm doing the back of the box, and then he leads me to turn. So I'm going back with my right foot. I'm going to the side. And as he leads me to turn, I pull my feet together. At the same time, my left foot rotates. And I change, I put my feet together and change weight so that then I'm ready to step forward on a heel and come back to him to face him again. So when I did that, I only turned my feet, mostly turned my feet, one, two, mostly turning my feet. If I want to look, I have to do it only with my head and not my shoulders. I don't want to open up my shoulders. So I'm going 
back on the right, to the side, turning my feet and my head, maintaining my shoulder line at level with the man, and then coming back to close. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna say something that is hyper important for the advanced dancer as well as the new dancer. And if you get it early, guys, it's gonna save you a lot of heartache later. The lead to promenade is rightward turn, that's turn towards your partner, towards your partner, with leftward movement. Rightward turn with leftward movement. And this came years ago from the conversation step where the gentleman would dance with the lady and they'd be walking around dancing and he would say something nice to the lady and make her move forward. We called that the conversation step. And when we address Foxtrot later, we'll say more about that. But what it was, was he turned towards his partner to allow her to step forward. And he escorted her nicely to position. As opposed to turning away from his partner and dragging her over his hip, which is a very common new dancer mistake, sometimes even seen in advanced dancers. So I always like to, even though it's difficult, I like to get this in early as a basic element of ballroom, the promenade. Body turns towards the partner as opposed to away, a little foot swivel to relocate your foot and then step across. So let me just do the man's part. It may be so subtle that you don't see it, but again, my hands are involved. So I step forward, I step to the side, turning my body towards my partner and pulling my feet as my knees turn slightly to the left. That's a counter, we'll call it a little bit of torque in the body, body right, head and feet to the left. And then we step across, resuming the normal dance position as we came back. So let me get further away from the camera so the feet can be seen as well. We step forward on the left, side on the right, turning the body to the right, but allowing the feet to swivel slightly to this left. It's a slight wind in your body as your head will stay to the left. And then we step across, side, and close. This is a good time to put basic alignment of the head because people always say to me, where do we look? What do we do with our heads? Simple, simple thought. I don't have a prop for this one, but I keep threatening to get one. Let's just say you put the, one finger on the back of the head and one finger on your nose. And this is not like a hazing ritual. This is really true. So you know, that, that is a line that goes from the back, the nape of your neck to the tip of your nose. That line is parallel to the foot that bears weight. So my, we always say cavalierly, oh, nose over toes, and that's not untrue. But this line being parallel to the foot that you're standing is a much better depiction of where we are standing and looking as we move. And I think that would be true for the lady. So even though sometimes we look like we're turned more to the left, it's because the body has shaped much more under the head. And we will get into that on a more advanced tape. But right now, line from the nape of the neck to the tip of the nose, parallel to the foot that's bearing weight. And um, if you have an old gag gift like an arrow through the head, just turn it this way and it's gonna work perfectly. And I always threaten to get that one. So that's a good point. So we're gonna do the twinkle to promenade now. Janelle will be going backwards first. One, two, three, one, two, three. And you can see if we do it in this direction, how leg tracking will be very, very important. So let's do it on this alignment. One, two, three, one, two, three. And now one more, maybe from this side so you can see it as well. So you can see how our bodies fit together. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now, if this were really old school, and I often tell people to do this, I would have the guy look at the girl and have a look at her and say, oh, come on, with me. And that prevents your right shoulder from pushing forward, which as we know, if you've danced for any amount of time, is a no-no. Right shoulder coming forward. There's also no rule that I have to look to promenade. I could just leave my head over his shoulder. And that actually feels quite nice. And like, I like to look at sometimes. I just think it looks elegant. It looks kind of elegant leaving the head back. 
Oh, and yes, ballroom dancing is about elegance and sophistication. Yes, <laughs> so let's have a bit of that. So that's the twinkle to promenade. I think one other step I think we wanted to cover just briefly is the face-to-face, back-to-back, which can be danced off the underarm turn. So if we do the underarm turn, let's do it this way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now we go forward, side, close and pull the feet. Forward, side, close and pull the feet. And now a twinkle ending is nice here. Forward, side, turn and swivel. And forward, side, close. Janelle, did you want to talk about the features of why you like this step so much? Well, yeah, one of, one of the things I like to teach, I, I like to tell the ladies that when they're doing the uh, face-to-face, back-to-back, or hand-to-hand, there's always more than one name to every step. But as the lady comes around, she's coming into the end run turn, walking around, and on this part where we're going face-to-face, if I would come through and take my hand through, or we're only doing one, then I, I can actually lead my own body. I don't get stuck behind. But we really did one, so there really wasn't a lot of opportunity. So the pulling of the feet is, was a good principle here, right? So one, two, three, release like the underarm turn. Instead of closing up at this, move onward. Right, that's what move I'm saying, moving on, my hand. And then close and swivel. And we can close that together. So we can use box, Left box with no turn, left box with quarter turn, the underarm turn, the twinkle to promenade, the face to face, back to back. Now, why do we dance? Because we love music. And we love we to like move. the music. So we want to move in such a way that is inspired by the sound. So now I'm going to walk to the music area. Now, I already told you my studio was 33 years old in the same room. And you're going to see what we have that not every studio has had. We will now use, for your entertainment pleasure, a vinyl disc known as a record album. Let's put some music on, some old-fashioned waltz, and we will try this. Hope I got a waltz. So Janelle takes her shape, I hold, no turn. This is the box with no turn. Quarter turning box. Against the underarm turn. Now the twinkle of the promenade. Up. Underarm turn, turning in face to face, back to back. Twinkle of the promenade. And well done. Enjoyable. So turn off the record. Nothing like that old-fashioned music, I like old which fashion. inspired the dance. Fantastic to practice to. Sometimes it's good just to put on the music and without taking steps, try to see what your body would do to that sound. Now, I've been teaching workshops probably over 30 years, over 30 years, big workshops. And I always, one of the questions that always comes up is how, I, oh, I can't dance to timing, I have trouble hearing the music. So every beginning waltz class I've ever done, I always start in this way. I make people stand, wait on two feet, and I ask them just to move their arms under their head, letting their body change between the head and the feet. And then we put on the waltz, and we do that in time to music. And every time, it's 100% accuracy. 
So I'm just going to put on the music again for me, for you, for us, and we're going to listen to this music, and we're going to try to be inspired by the movement and find itself. So we'll start to the weight on the right, and... Do it at home. So easy to do. Now we can do it together. Well, we'll do it with the side side first. So now as we get together to dance that, we will image that sound in this way. Fast and slow. Try to image that sound throughout. Okay. Lovely music. So now we've used up a lot of time talking about the waltz. So we will just do a brief exhibition of the foxtrot. Brief exhibition. So because I think it's important and it talks about tracking of the legs and inside and outside of turn. So, first thing, steps in the foxtrot. Two forward walks, followed by a side close. Two forward walks could be in any direction, followed by a side close. So we're gonna do walk, walk, side, close. Left foot free again. I could do walk, walk, side, close. Left foot free again. That's a basic Foxtrot. So Janelle and I will do this together. She will go back, back, side close. So again, tone in the arms, hands. We do walk, walk, side close. Walk, walk, side close. A fantastic dance for working on leg tracking as well as tone in the frame, indicating to partner how far I'd like her to go and in what direction. Also, just being aware of your partner and the position that you're in. As lady, when I go back to two walks and then to the side, I must not take a larger step or even the same size step as the man because I don't want to end up in front of him. So keeping my head weight always over his shoulder, when I go to the side, I leave my head over my left foot and then only place my right foot to the side, fairly small, allowing him to be in that same position. Just being aware, just as there's an awareness of feeling where you are in the position. Right, so you could use that same principle to moving to the right, hip and hand, yeah. moving to the left, head and elbow. Mm -hmm. Or get out your umbrella, or get out your baseball bat, and put it shoulder to shoulder, and see if that works as well. Yeah. So that's your basic fox trap. The, the step that's sort of important is the zigzag. Zigzag, sort of important because it employs inside and outside of turn and allows the lady to go forward as well as the gentleman going backwards. And we always will do this on a diagonal. So I'll do it here first. And I will do the gentleman's part here. Uh, hands in dance position, we walk forward, forward. And now we swing the left leg forward across my line of dance and we swivel on it to close. Should be reminiscent of the box of the waltz. Then we go backwards for two. Back, back. We swing the leg back, this is the tracking exercise, till it points, left foot, to the diagonal. And then I move and stand on it, pulling my toes nicely underneath, and I've then relocated to a new diagonal allowing my body to be in line with my partner. Let me do that one more time from the back. We do walk, walk, swing forward across the line of dance, swivel and close, back, back, swing back past the line of dance, pointing alignment, 
and close. That's inside and outside of turn, or in this case, outside and inside of turn. So Janelle, if you wouldn't mind demonstrating the ladies part. Okay. So the other really important thing about this step is it teaches you uh, a big, the beginnings of a left and right turn, because we turn to the right and we turn to the left. But as lady, I'm going back two steps, starting with my right foot, back and back. I point, this is not a large step, because I need always him to be on that side, and then I close my feet. I'm going forward with the heel, forward with the heel, and I have a, I have a swivel action to close, staying in front of the man. So it is important that when I go back, I know that I want to stay in the arm, so I can't let myself drift rightward. It makes it very difficult for the man to pass me. So I'm going back, and as I go back, I feel his arm moving, so I go to the arm. I close my feet, I go forward, I go forward, I swing this toe forward, swivel, and as I close my feet, I keep my head towards my left foot. Great place for the Nerf bat. In this position, we can do slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick. And Janelle stays beautifully poised in that space under the threat of the baseball bat. <laughs> so that's your basic pattern of foxtrot and the zigzag and the zigzag. And that's using inside and outside of turns, not dissimilar from what we were doing in the waltz. Now, the, the, the next step I wanted to just do is the promenade, the promenade. So if we started from zero, that's closed position, I would turn towards my partner, body turns right, but I would move to the side on the left. And then we'd step across, side, and close. The key being there, don't go in where I'm going, but turn towards my partner and move away from her simultaneously, which will allow her to swivel over her left foot and go to a forward walk into the promenade position as we step across. So that's your promenade. My hands, gentlemen, have to be equidistant. They don't change. So again, if you can use the bat for something as well, Put your hands together. When you turn, everything goes together. I don't separate the hands because then the bat would fall to the floor. I, even though the girl is malleable, she still wants to feel that constant lead of pressure of two hands connecting the hand and the upper left arm. And that makes me feel secure when I know that I'm not losing the position. Right, so that's, that's the, the, now if you can help yourself off the zigzag by using that slight turn to the right to help indicate the promenade early. And I'll show you from Janelle's back so you can see this. So we do a, a zigzag. I dance across the line of dance. I dance to a pointing alignment. And now I turn my legs towards her and my body. And then we can do the promenade quite comfortably. We haven't talked about the timing because that's super important. Even though some of the patterns we will eventually share with the waltz, and even to a certain degree some of the other dances, the rhythm is very different. So waltz had this lovely descending swing, going fast and collecting at the peak. One, two, three, one, two, three, which makes your body want to do that. The foxtrot has more of a tick to it. A one, two, three, four. A one, two, three, four. Not making you want to swing at all. And we'll play that music for you in a second. But how we, let's say, image that sound with our bodies, and I'll do it from the back first, and you know can do it backwards. We do one, two, three, four. Side close. One, two, three, four. Side close. Now again, this is your basic, basic level to give you the feel of the music. If you're more sophisticated dancer, you might try to smooth that out, but you still have to show an acceleration in the dance to the quick from the ends of your slows. Okay, so we're going to do that together. Now, I know I said that fast, but does it make it any less important? 
So go ahead. And no, I think well, right. I think that um, foxtrot, bronze foxtrot, is more of a rhythm dance. It's very rhythmical. And Absolutely. if you ignore that, then you're sort of changing the dance. So we will go to the old Victrola again and put on a nice disc, a nice foxtrot. See how it feels. Foxtrot. We'll just do a basic first note Grand Theft Twinkle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we changed the timing, slow, quick, quick. One slow, two quicks, rather than slow, slow, quick, quick. Two slows, two quicks. The other thing we stole is the back half of a box. We did a quarter turn, which is one step forward, one step back, and a side close. Quarter turn used for floor craft. So we, won't, we don't have the time to go in depth about those figures, but we wanted to show that it's possible to navigate even in a very small space. You could do that in your hallway at home. In your kitchen. Or in your kitchen, <laughs> or on the driveway, or in the garage, or you know, in the, in the Walmart, wherever you're getting your toilet paper. Don't go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's, that's all we have time for. We could, we could talk about ballroom dancing forever. In fact, we do. We do. And we were just delighted that Wayne and Dance Vision gave us the opportunity to present this for you. Hopefully you learned something and had a little fun and passed some time in troubling times. I hope everybody stays super well, super fit, and by all means, happy dancing. And Thank keep you. dancing. Oh yeah. <laughs>